So, the new poster for Masters of the Universe Revolution dropped. And it looks amazing. But hang on, this quality looks to be a bit compressed. No worries, Mattel was kind enough to send me a higher quality poster. There, now we can better see He-Man's blue eyes. I should also point out that there are actually two versions of the poster currently online. You can see here on the left image the sides of the artwork are cropped slightly. The Revolution logo is also much bigger in the left version. So as the right side gives us more artwork all around, I'll be referencing that one. Before jumping into the video, my name is Jukka, and remember to subscribe and like so you won't miss out on future videos. There are some official Masters of the Universe Revelation and Revolution exclusives on my channel, so check them out. The art on the poster is once again illustrated by the talented Nate Birch, who is a great friend and has been a longtime fan in the Masters community working on several official projects from 2002 comics through the Classics toy line and current Origins toy line and more. Right off the bat, no pun intended, as the Season 1 poster had a little homage to the vintage William George poster. By that I mean having characters on both sides up on rocky cliffs. The Season 2 poster has a fun homage to the original toy packaging with exploding rocks. And you can see that while in the toy packaging the backdrop is blue with red rocks, in this poster art they switched it around so that the background color is red and we get a blue burst at the bottom with said exploding rocks. I think that's a very neat twist. But let's start from the top. As I mentioned in my trailer breakdown video, Motherboard, who is working for Hordak, gets inside Castle Grayskull and starts to infect it with her technology. The castle looks to get an ominous evil Horde upgrade on it, which is reminiscent of the Mattel and DC Comics story arc The Eternity War by Rob David. In that story, Hordak invaded Grayskull, and it was completely transformed into something new. Here it doesn't look to be as drastic of a change, but the castle definitely has been altered, with wings on the sides, red bat elements, and some nasty spikes for good measure. And on the lower side of the castle we see the technological infection from Motherboard. The same infection actually is creeping up at the very bottom of the poster towards our heroes. A big focus is on Skeletor, which I really like. The details are great, and his gleaming red eye gives me a fun Terminator vibe. Motherboard and Hordex poses look like they are based on the powerhouse model sheets, but they look fantastic nonetheless behind Skeletor. This trio of villains will be fun to watch in the upcoming episodes. On the hero's side, I first want to mention how I really like that all the characters displaying magic or energy here have different colors each. Evelyn with her purple magic, He-Man's sword has blue around it, and there are some yellow bits on the sword. I tried zooming in and it appears almost like stitching on the power sword, which you may remember is seen on the back of the Orko and Gwildor 2-pack. So I reckon when Gwildor and Orko need to team up and upgrade He-Man's power sword, that that is what we are seeing here. Then Tila has the green snake magic, and Lieutenant Andra blasts off a red beam. Circling back to Tila, in the teaser trailer she went to meet Granomir at Darksmoke, and she is being affected by the green snake magic. I hinted in my breakdown video of her new design, and it is just awesome to see it here. That girl just won't stop changing her look. So let's see what the upcoming season has in store for us. This uh, design is of course the copper armor and green skin, a nod to the sorceress and how she appeared in the very first minicomic, He-Man and the Power Sword. It is also not the first time that Tila has appeared like this. 
Going back to the Mattel and DC's Eternity War, as there she became the sorceress of Serpos. This version is an interesting take with dark green sleeves to cover her arms and upper torso, some fur parts on the shoulders, bare midriff and a semi-transparent cloth uh, skirt which looks like the tail of a snake in this ensemble. In this poster, we get a better look at both of her feet too, while the other poster obscured it with the logo. Evelyn also is sporting a new look that has some of the elements from the design titled Liberated Evelyn, as we last saw her on Trolla at the very very end of Season 1. Then there is Granamir, the wisest of all dragons. He looks terrific and it's just nice to see a better look at him than what we could glimpse in the teaser trailer. His inclusion on the poster is also a good reminder of the balance of the mythical magics on Eternia, even as there is a technological threat trying to take over. Then in front we have Duncan, in his new Man o' War armor design, he briefly showed up in the teaser already, and I hope we'll see more of him in the full trailer. And at the center of it all, the most powerful man in the universe, on his faithful tiger, armed with the new battle armor created by Lieutenant Andra, as Dad at Arms had the scoop on his channel back in July with executive producer Rob David. Then, naturally, there is the Masters of the Universe logo, and just as the bad guys have the Purple Revolution logo, here we see the Heroes version with yellow and orange colors. Both versions will be used in the series. Now, aside from the poster reveal, there also was an update on the Netflix official voice cast. So, under the Masters of the Universe Revolution show credits, we see the cast list, Chris Wood, who will continue to portray Prince Adam slash He-Man, his wife Melissa Benoa is going to be Tila, which I covered in an earlier video, Mark Hamill as Skeletor, William Shatner is one of the more surprising character choices, which has not been revealed yet, but no, he's not going to be Zodak or Hordak, as some fans have speculated. Speaking of Hordak, Keith David was announced for the role back in 2023's San Diego Comic Con. Tiffany Smith is a Lieutenant Andra, of course, Lena Headey as Evil Lynn, Liam Cunningham as Man at Arms, and then Susan Eisenberg is listed. So, like I said in my earlier uh, breakdown video, I really hope to see the sorceress maybe communicate with Tila in some fashion. Susan will also lend her voice in another instance during Season 1, which you guys will get to hear in Episode 1 already. The wonderful Meg Foster will be Motherboard, and many fans remember her as Evelyn in the 1987 live-action film, though Meg won't be the only legacy voice you will hear on the show. Hint, hint. Steven Root is again back as Cringer, but will also be giving us a Battle Cat voice, since He-Man's fighting tiger companion is going to have dialogue too. Griffin Newman is Orc of the Great, and then the last two voices listed are Dietrich Bader, who is returning as King Randor, but the new name here is Gates McFadden, famously known for her role in the Star Trek franchise as Dr. Beverly Crusher. No official reveal yet on the character she will portray, but I think you guys will like it. The character she portrays is not displayed on the poster, though. I saw some fans speculate that, but that is not the case. Pretty exciting to have more Star Trek alumni this season of He-Man. The list seen here is by no means a complete one. As we know, Tony Todd returns as Scareglow, um, Harley Quinn Smith will have a voice role in Season 2, and Phil Lamar will voice Mentor. So, there you have it. Season 2 will be 5 episodes long, with a regular 25 minute runtime on each episode, as stated in the description under the teaser trailer on the official YouTube channel. So, don't buy into any video stating here's all we know about Season 2, and then they say it's going to be 10 episodes. That is just not the case. 
The show premieres in less than two weeks on January 25th, only on Netflix. Thank you for watching Eternia Effect Files, a source of history and regions for Masters of the Universe and Princess of Power. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on future updates, leave a comment what you thought about this video or what topics you'd like to see featured, and share this video as it would help my channel grow. My name is Yuka and I wish you good journey.